Hello, in this video I will explain how to detect objects using a vision sensor in Copelesim. This will be useful to implement robot visual servoing method, as we will see in the next video. The aims of the presentation is uh, to explain how vision sensors work in Copelesim and more specifically the Sim Vision plugin. We will create a camera from an existing model and configure it to work as a 3D camera in order to detect objects. I will explain the code that the sensor must include in its own script so that it can detect objects and also I will explain the meaning of the data provided by the object detection algorithm. I will also explain how to get the intrinsic parameters of the camera from the sensor properties since we will use these parameters to get the 3D uh, position of the objects. The ultimate objective of this presentation is to obtain the values detected for what we consider uh, as, or we, we know as the reference image, with the purpose of using this uh, reference image within uh, a visual servo in control scheme. Vision sensors must implement a callback function that will be called each time a new image is acquired. This function provides sensor data as input argument in a variable in data and it must return a table with the compressed or packed output information. By default, Copelesim returns a set of 15 values with information regarding the minimum, maximum and average values detected in the image. But we can return any other additional information if we properly pack this information. Furthermore, Copelesim uses two plugins that will allow us to process images. Specifically, the SimVision plugin includes a set of simple operations and functionalities for image processing, such as add or blob, blob detection, among others. The SimIM plugin includes additional processing functions. This is an OpenCV wrapper with some limited functionalities, but in general sufficient for many problems. In this video we will focus on the SimVision plugin. The SimVision plugin includes a set of functionalities to be able to detect objects in images. Although it is quite limited, it is useful to detect edges, blobs, segment by color, among other few features. Here I show you some of the functions that I consider more relevant for you in many of the standard applications. The way the plugin works is through three types of image buffers. On the one hand, we have the original uh, image, which can be overwritten if so wish. Let's say you want to show the processed image instead of the original one, so then you can write this information on the image sensor. Then on the other hand, the plugin um, uses the working image, uh, this is the buffer on which all the functions that I mentioned before, uh, they, they, they do the processing indeed. And in addition to this, there are a couple of auxiliary buffers that allow us to temporarily store a result of a working image to be able to perform some operations, for instance, uh, a subtraction. We're going to configure a, a vision sensor as a 3D camera that will provide us with the X, Y and Z coordinates of the objects. Copelesim includes in its model library a 3D camera named blob 2 3 d position TTM. The idea is that you can uh, drag uh, this uh, or uh, drag this object into your scene and we will modify the perspective angle of the camera to 45 degrees as you can see here in the property on the vision center properties. Uh, you can leave the rest of the parameters by default except the packet one is black option if you want you can mark this option if you want to speed uh, the calculations but you, I, I think you won't really uh, notice the real difference. We're also going to create a plane of dimension 100 by 100 square centimeters and four color circles of size 4 times 4 uh, square centimeters separated by the distance of 5 centimeters with respect to the center of the plane. Then we're going to make uh, uh, the blob to 3D position sensor object child of the blob to 3D position body object. And this 
will also be a child of the last link of the robot. Note that the original 3D camera model includes also a dynamic object that is part of the camera. We must remove this object because our simulation is a pure kinematic simulation, so we don't use dynamic objects. To proper uh, or to properly uh, position the camera uh, and, uh, and also the orientation, I've included here the position and orientations of each of the objects so you can obtain the same results I obtained at the end of the presentation. In addition to this, in the code that I show here, uh, or sorry, in the code that includes the sensor, we are actually going to modify the, the default code that is included in the syscall uh, vision function that will allow us to uh, implement the actual blob detection. Uh, in the code uh, I show here, uh, you, you can see that I'm calling the blob detection on word im function that allows detecting the objects or blobs. It has several parameters, one of the most important one is the threshold value, since it will determine the sensitivity of the sensor to detect certain type of objects, based on the, the contrast. Another important parameter in our case is the last argument that we have set to false, so that the return image remains exactly as, as the, uh, the original one, so it retains the original colors. Since we are going to distinguish each of the blobs according to their color. The parameter that we have set to zero indicates that the minimum, indicates the minimum size of the object that uh, we want to detect and setting this value to zero means that there's no filter used in this case. The blob detection on work image function returns an information with a very specific uh, structure that is documented in the function help. Every time we read from the vision sensor, we will get this information and specifically it returns a table with the number of blobs it has detected as well as the blob size in terms of the number of fields that each blob contains and um, also this will help us to uh, properly uh, separate and distinguish between all blobs because they are returned in a single table. The table size actually should be uh, the blob size, which is 6 in this case, multiplied by the number of detected blobs plus 2. Each blob contains information about the relative size, the orientation, x, y, x and y position and width and height. The x and y position are normalized uh, to uh, the blob center coordinates. Now let's see how to access all this information. So we need to create, in this case, a script that will be associated to the robot base, if you don't have already this script created. And in, in, the, in the syscall init function, uh, we must access to the parameter or the, the camera handle and obtain information about its intrinsic parameters, such as the horizontal and vertical resolution, perspective angle, near and far clipping distances, and horizontal and vertical scaling parameters. All this data it's relevant in order to translate pixels into 3D points. Then we can create a function for detecting 3D objects. So the purpose of this function is to call scene read vision sensor function that will return information about the objects detected in the AUX2 variable. Coppelia, remember that Coppelia seems returns by default a buffer with 15 elements. In this case, this information is returning the AUX1 variable and it's uh, a generic information regarding the properties of the image, such as the gray, the average gray values, and among other information. We're not interested in that information, but we will use the actual return uh, value uh, that we have, or the, the information that we have in the return variable AUX2. As you can see in the for loop, I extract all the information that the camera returns and store it in the variable s that contains the coordinates x, y, and z of the detected objects. Note that the variable depth has been obtained because the camera includes a depth buffer, which returns the depth of each of the pixels normalized between the values near clip and far clip, while the coordinates x and y are obtained from coordinates of the objects in the image, and since they are also normalized, we must multiply the pixel value by its z-coordinate and divide it by the scale factor. 
also inside the for loop I get uh, the, uh, the, the color of the, uh, of the object, the RGB color that or particularly the, of the, the, uh, the pixel uh, in which we have the x and y coordinate and we store this in the colors variable. In summary, the blobs 3D points function returns a list of coordinates each of, uh, with each of the features and it has also a list with all the colors. If you call blob 3D points function inside the syscall sensing function and print the values of the variables as ref and colors ref, they should have approximately the values that I show here in these tables. These values will be considered as reference values when implemented a robot visual servo in. If everything is correct, you should also see that the camera projects four spheres right in the position where the circles are. Well, in this presentation I have explained how to implement object detection that will help us to implement visual feedback control as I will explain in the next video. Thank you very much.